special holiday edition, Founders Day edition of 3FM Sunrise or 3FM 92.7. Thank you so much for deciding to start your morning with us. Now my next guest is already seated in the studio. Albert Tete Amafu, a.k.a. Verbal Transformers. Prolific writer and spoken word minister, founder, CEO of the Power Foundation and Verbal Transformers. And project director of Parables Animation Studios. A very busy man indeed. Albert, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you too. How have we been? Great. By God's grace, we're doing so well. Amazing. I know that you get super excited um, on a day like this. And get close to the microphone for me so we can hear you. I know you get very excited on a day like this when we are able to, you know, go back in time, if you will, to hail those before us who have made it possible for us to sit here this morning and, of course, call Ghana uh, home. So happy Founders Day uh, to you. How do you typically commemorate the day? I know you usually do your media <laughs> rounds and you give us some... Yeah. A powerful spoken word. But beyond that, how do you reflect leading up to Founders Day? Okay, so um, I think um, days like this, what I do is to study more, go and um, get myself um, some in-depth knowledge about the past, how the... Um, how the, the struggle for independence and everything, fighting for independence, how things um, metamorphosed over time. So every time, and even though I get to know certain things or I've already known them, I still go back to check them because you need to check frequently to keep yourself abreast of what's, what's up. And um, how I actually s celebrate such days is one of which he said, um, I go around media houses, Whenever they contact, I, I say yes, because it's time to also share the knowledge you've gained over time. Mm. And, uh, afterwards, after the media runs, majorly I do workshops for people, um, how they can use their creative aspect to actually um, push this very narrative to end mm. the narratives of Ghana and Africa. So basically that's how it's been. And to me, I think days like this should be um, celebrated in a grand style. Mm. People should appreciate these are times where parents, you, you are home, it's a holiday. You should be able to sit with your child, tell them some stories that are worth telling mm. with respect to, it can be the folklore, it can be what matters today and all. Mix it up and let the people enjoy themselves. So it's, it's a wonderful day. Let's not just enjoy it as a holiday. Let's yeah. enjoy it but pass on something that, that, that it will benefit the family, it will benefit kids out there, it will benefit even adults because people actually are not really now. That's right. There's a, there's a huge gap yeah. when it comes to um, getting that much needed knowledge about, um, you know, how Ghana came, you know, into being. Uh, for many of us, we are lacking that, um, shall I say, um, information, that intel. And then, of course, when you insert politics into the whole scenario, you get um, a, lot of, a lot of noise, if you will. So something that has been quite topical, trending, if you will, on social media and beyond is what the president had to say in his Founders Day address. He says he completely rejects the notion that Ghana was founded by one man. And he's referring to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. I know the CPP has been reacting along with many others. What do you make of that speech? Um, that he gave to, or that address uh, to the nation. Okay, so um, personally, if, if, you, if you do your research, you realize that in many countries around the world, they have a significant figure out there that is celebrated. We all know, even at home, a family, it takes the entire, like, like the two people that came together to build the family. It takes these two taking decisions to make things happen. But when we're going to call the head of the family, it's a name. So it, it shows that whenever we're fighting on even the battlefield, there's a lead, there's a commander. At our borders, there are commanders that command people there to act. On, uh, in the army, in the, in the police service and all that, there is a leader. So when we are celebrating and we, we, we've marked this over the years that this is the founder we're celebrating, it has nothing to do with anything that someone will see this as sidelining others. Mm. The best way is to bring the others into the picture. The best way to bring the others into the picture is to show for the works they've done. And that is pushing and enhancing the narratives. But it's not to discredit the leader that has been there and celebrated over the years. And um, in communication, your tone also matters. Okay. 
So the tone with which you communicate something tells of how bitter you are in communicating it. You use the word bitter, Albert. Yeah. Why, why that choice of word? Um, that's, that's, that's what people are discussing all over the internet. Mm. Like, um, oh, the president said this, the president said that, but they feel that the president is bitter about what's actually at stake. And it reflects in your sound, your tone. You might not have that notion. Is that what you, you picked when you listened to the, the president? Maybe he is also coming from that place of, well, he says it's a collective effort. We have all come together to make Ghana what it is now. In fact, our struggle started in, in fact, some would say in the 17th yeah. century, not even just in the, in the 20th century, in the 18th, 19th century. This is something that has been ongoing for a long time. And yes, you mentioned that there's a, always somebody at the forefront, yeah. but he says it's collective. Collective, which is no wrong. So I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the point. Mm. So people are actually judging from the point that the tone, it feels like this is from a bitter person. Then, so me, I, for me, I actually don't listen to these politicians, you know, because they try to sweet talk you and take you uh. off the track. And so I was, I also just, it was, it was just on my timeline on X. I had to quickly watch it. I just saw it and I moved on. So when I saw people debating it and all, I was like, yeah, people will say that because your tone wasn't right. Secondly, was it three or four years back? They had, was it a conference or a town hall where Nkrumah's photo was almost cropped out, if not cropped out, and it's all on the media. So people trying to, these are compounding facts that they can say, okay, the way you push in the narrative and all, it looks like you have something against the, uh, the, the founding president and all. So it, it depends on how things are communicated. But the truth is also there, and matters how you communicate the truth, and the truth also hurts. Mm. We have people that supported to, 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 to fight for independence, and even the fight started because there are roots to every uh, branches you see. There are stems before you see the branches that yield the fruits. So it means that there's, there's a journey, there's the, and for every success there's a process. But as I said, there must be someone spearheading these things. And that is what has been accepted over time and the person has been celebrated over time. Uh. The best way to bring others into the picture is to highlight what they've done. I, I, I find that interesting, that perspective. So you highlight what their efforts yeah. were so that we can all celebrate celebration. those efforts. Well, interestingly, um, uh, uh, historian Kweku Dako Ankra, uh, back in 2019, these were his thoughts. He, he described it as problematic how personalities and dates are selected for commemoration in Ghana at the time. He explained how independent struggle started from 1897 when the Aborigines Right Protection Society, ARPS, was formed to fight for the freedom of the then Gold Coast and even the whole of West Africa. He said politicians seek to select dates and personalities that have a direct elevation of their political and sometimes biological antiquity and does not augur well for the progress of the nation. So if you listen to these are uh, uh, the thoughts of historian um, uh, 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 Daku Ankra, that we pick these dates, we pick out these personalities that elevate our own, shall I say, biases, our own um, you know, innate convictions. Is that something that you agree with? Is that something that... Because he says that let's pick a neutral date that can celebrate this idea of a collective effort as opposed to singling out persons who he say seem to uh, elevate a particular political party's ideologies. Yeah. So it's, it's also an excellent point and all. And people will be people. That's the whole thing. I have studied the, the, the trend of politics over time and it looks like... The mindset of people refuses to change because they feel this is where um, um, I'm connected. This is my home as a political party. And that makes it very difficult to just take off their political lenses to see what's right. So when a political um, party follower tells you this is green, which is black, no matter what you do, it will take it would take the grace of God uh. to actually change the mindset of that very person. So we can single out and because how how many how many top figures do we have when we come when it comes to the the struggle for independence or the fight for independence? We have just a few. If we want to celebrate them, we can have various patterns or various ways to celebrate these very people. And once again, as I said, it is by highlighting what they've done. 
We are fighting for days to celebrate these people, and unfortunately, we don't have them in our books. Elaborate, like, extensively. These are people that we really feel that they need to be celebrated. We don't even have them at their basics, where younger people will get to know the heroes of their land. But all we're looking at is rewriting history. All we're looking at is trying to twist the story, the narratives over time. Mm. So if we, on, if we really want to push the agenda of celebrating everyone that matter, I think for me, let's not start it with a fight for whoever they are celebrating now. Make sure you revise the books, their history books, our social studies books. Put these people in there. When we see the works they've done, the lives they've lived, the impact they've made in society and on this country and Africa as a whole, you will not be the one coming to, to sit alone to tell people who must be celebrated or who is supposed to be added. The people themselves will recognize their own leaders and celebrate them. And they will demand for who they want to see. So let's change the narratives right from the basics. In singling out people, to celebrate them, I think the best way to celebrate them is celebrating ourselves. You say to celebrate ourselves. Yeah. Expand on that. The b best way to celebrate my father is to celebrate myself. And in celebrating myself means my successes reflect the works my father has done. So when I get to celebrate myself very well, my father is celebrated. So if this land is progressing, it means the works of our fathers, our forefathers, has actually yielded this lasting and then precious fruits. So when we get to celebrate the works we've done today, we're celebrating the foundations upon which these works have been done. So if we get to see what the current government has done or is doing, and we are celebrating them, we can remember that the Tema Motorway was con constructed over 50 years or 60 years ago. But you came in and it was a two lane and now you have like six lanes. Are we not celebrating ourselves and celebrating the founders? I like that perspective. Exactly. You say do the deeds then we can add on to that legacy, that collective legacy, we add you on to that. But time check, it is some 10 minutes to the top <laughs> of the uh, 8 a.m. This is 3FM Sunrise on 3FM 92.7 hour, but I'm aware that you'll also be sharing uh, some powerful words on TV, um, so I won't keep you too long. I know you have something special prepared <laughs> for us. Let's yeah. hear you, and then hopefully you can join us uh, before we leave the show. So sure. over to you. This is Albert Tete, Verbal Transformer. Something special for Founders Day. All right. So um, I think I, I, we even change it now. <laughs> they told us that our future lies in our hands. But we grew up looking into these very futures of ours with the seedlings that came forth from the basic seeds that we've sown. Yet to date, we've still not found any arable lands to permanently plant our dreams or these very seedlings to enjoy of the bountiful harvest, the fruit that will come off thereof. So it has left us with several thoughts and several questions like, how could we be proud of our forefathers if the fathers of today keep telling us that we've been planted by rivers, yet our roots keep searching for water from afar? For how long would we keep searching? Deliberately reaching out to foreign zones for nutrients, yet till date we've not still shown any signs of maturity. Or is it that, in one way or the other, directly or indirectly, we've been ill-fed by these very people? Because it's highly unbelievable and terrifying to be fed with the knowledge of being planted by rivers, yet our roots keep searching for water from foreign lands, from foreign zones. To everyone listening to me and to everyone here, permit me to gladly ask, are our rivers dead? Are the rivers in our own lands dead? So we ask and also, fathers, please answer us. We sincerely want to know if our rivers are truly dead or is, uh, these are the leaders who reside by the banks of these very rivers who are causing mayhem. Man them. Me, I don't even understand them. But me never wish you not to pray say fire go bend them. Youth, not respect to them. But to these very leaders, I see that the youth of today, we are very powerful too. So it really matters how they use us. Because when they use us rightly, we will be a great tool for significant advancement of this very country and continent of our own. But when they continue to misuse us, we will be a great tool to cause terrible damage to this very land, our own motherland and our continent. So I look forward to that very new Africa because it's been the same old, the same old stories when we see it as young people that we keep telling. Because way back, 
unfortunately we had our forefathers sitting under the great baobab tree the great iroko tree or whatsoever tree you want to name it the zip code palm wine that sets coldness down the spine the brooded over the negativities of the land with no inspiration of making mind-blowing preparation for us even the younger generation even if they had no determination to cause changes in their time and this really disturbs me as a young african you know because Helen, despite all we've got, we still despise the despite of our land and travel to foreign lands to get deals done, although we never had any mark done in our own land. Because sincerely, even before I exit in Africa, having to heard of the Dangotes, the Delas, and Otedulas who can borrow us millions of dollars in the same check we go begging for, or is it that we have no respect for our own? Or is it that we value not our own? And that is why I look forward to a new Africa, where saving for living will be encouraged over saving for burial. I look forward to that very new Africa, where MPs won't travel overseas pretending they've not seen the kids in their communities sitting under trees for studies. No, how sorrowful it is that our cars must pass a, our cars must pass a roadworthy test to be worthy to be driven on our roads, yet our roads are still not worthy. It's so sorrowful, it's so sad. So I look forward to that very new Africa, where in Krumah said, that our freedom will be meaningless until it's connected to the total liberation of our African continent. Osaji 4 again said that revolutions are brought about by men, men who think as men of action and act as men of thoughts. And he also added that the forces that unite us are intrinsic and greater than the superimposed forces that keep us apart. It is clear now that we must find African solutions to our problem. And that will only be found in African unity. Divided, we are weak. United Africa can become far more one of the greatest continents in the world. I am an African not because I was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in me. We must unite now or perish. And that has, these are the words of, of Osajifu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Today, Osajifu is being crawled out, out of the photo. What else can we sit to see? If the roots, the foundations are not glorified, then upon which foundations are we going to build the superstructures we want to enjoy? I'll be gone, but not for long. I'll be back again. And when I'm back again, maybe some house, <laughs> somewhere, or in TV, <laughs> in TV 3, 3 FM studios, you get to know of the political gang rape. It's loading. Thank you. It is loading indeed. Thank you so much for that, Albert. Two Thank snaps, two snaps, two snaps, two snaps, two snaps, two snaps. <laughs> well, we'll take uh, a light, take leave of us at this point, but do uh, make sure you join us again as we wrap up on this sure, conversation sure, sure, and sure. time check some five minutes uh, to the top of the hour, 8 a.m. This is 3 FM Sunrise on 3 FM 92.7. It is Founders Day, and we are here to unravel some of the mystery, if you will. A lot of of you sharing your thoughts keep doing so we're streaming on the socials you can find us on facebook live drop us a comment the hashtag we're using it is hashtag 3 fm sunrise